Hey guys, Puppy's World here, and today I bring you the Project Debut 3 turntable. So, quick word before I get into the full-on review and test of this turntable. I'm going to quickly talk about some of the aspects that I like about it. Now, keep in mind that this is probably one of the most ready, out-of-the-box turntables that you will ever experience straight from the factory. There's a little installation involved with putting it together and setting it up. However, for our video today, for our test and review purpose, I wanted to start out with a brand new album, a brand new vinyl record that I've never played before on any other turntable. So we've got that here. Also, I want to quickly talk about the factory cartridge that it comes pre-installed with, and also the fact that it does not have a removable head shell, traditional to most turntables, as you can see. I will be changing that cartridge out, the OM5E Ortofan cartridge, factory supplied, of course. I will be changing that out with our Ortofan 2M red cartridge at some point. However, to quickly talk about some of the aspects of this turntable, I'm going to give the camera here to my predecessor. Welcome to Puppy's World, guys, and thank you for joining us, as today we have the Project Debut 3 turntable. Move over to the blue lot. Okay. To get things started, I'm just going to quickly talk about the several types of connections that this turntable can boast. After that, I'll quickly talk about what I like, don't like about it, but then we'll get into the full hands-on testing and review and listening to the actual record. And comparing that to other systems, of course on the same amplifier and the same speakers, otherwise we wouldn't know a difference or be able to compare it effectively without items such as a condenser microphone or really panning the music from left or right speakers and being able to hear that effectively on your computer. So, for demonstration purposes, I have said I have a brand new record here, but I'm going to quickly talk about, run through the ways that I have connected this turntable and give you my suggestions or at least my findings on how I've had it connected, how I have it connected, and what I find the best ways of connecting it are. Now, fortunately for me, Project has supplied us with a turntable that finally has removable RCA cords to it, as well as a grounding cord to it. I have yet to see a turntable right out of the box that has this. Right there, guys, and a grounding port right there. So I'm grounded up, I've got my RCAs connected, but more specifically, I am preamped with my Emotiva XPS-1 Gen 2 High Precision Low Noise Phono Preamplifier. I am using all AudioQuest connections except the supplied Project RCAs with ground, of course, that came with it. Now, just a little uh, topic of discussion for a Phono Preamplifier. Project recommends that you select any Phono Preamplifiers at a 470 ohm impedance. I will go in and try to find in a brief, yes, as you can see there, 47 ohms would be 47 ohms. 47 kilo ohms would be 470 ohms, of course, on a moving magnet input. We've got that selected, of course, for a moving magnet, and we've got 100 ohms selected at this point. I really haven't found changing that to be much different or affecting it, its performance in too much way, but um, that is why I have chosen to wire this and connect it coming into my phono preamplifier, leaving the phono preamplifier via RCA's AudioQuest cables, going into my Parasound preamplifier, of course, which after leaving the phono preamplifier, of course, is converting it to a line level input capable of receiving by any stereo, solid state, tube, what have you. At that point, we are fixed to a variable connection. I'm sorry, not fixed. We are 
fed through a variable connection into the Pioneer Elite A20 integrated amplifier. However, traditionally wise, we would have, and we have, of course, when first setting this guy up, played him directly connected to our Pioneer Elite A20 through the phono input. Now we went and quickly talked about using a phono preamplifier denotes the possibility or need to select a phono input that allows us to select any input on any amplifier. So, guys, I found that the best way of connecting this guy up was through the Parasound and then my Elite A20. Through my Elite A20, I've had to do some wiring changes just to tweak this turntable to the liking of uh, my music taste. And if you know anything about the music taste that I have, guys, I really, really, really enjoy a, a, a very warm, true to natural reproductive sound. So I try to take as much bass out as I can in my music, specifically with vinyl. So I've got that set up here with as limited bass as I can possibly get it, but technically using three forms of EQ, attuning it through the phono preamp, through the Parasound preamplifier, and then once more through the Pioneer Elite A20. Now, this did sound amazing through my Emotiva Base XA300 amplifier. However, that is a power amplifier with no volume control or EQ settings. So I will be waiting on connecting my Emotiva A300 amp to either speakers being Kef, Klipsch, or some other ones down the road we find. For this review purpose, we have it connected straight to our Pioneer Elite A20 integrated amplifier. Now, now that I've talked about quickly what I have it wired into and how I have it wired up, I'm going to quickly take a minute or two to talk about how I have the speakers wired, then we're going to get into the full-on hands-on review of this, guys. Okay, guys. Now that I've talked about the different ways of connecting this, and I've talked about simply what we're going to be doing for some of the videos that I've done. Keep in mind this is a three-part video. So, I'm going to be doing my rambling on in this section. The next two sections of the video will be actually comparing the sound, playing the same record on multiple different turntables, as well as multiple different connections, multiple different speakers, as well as multiple different cartridges and stylus. So, for this demonstration, I have things set up through my Pioneer Lead A20 integrated amplifier, of course. However, I wanted to quickly talk about what my findings were on that, because I could simply play the record player for you. You could see it in action. But hearing it, of course, reproduced through your computer speakers would not be the best way to gauge or judge its performance. That is why I will simply give a minute-long speech, and then we'll end this video, and we'll come back to the more comprehensive testing results of actually spinning the platter, dropping the tone on down, and playing music for you. So for this video purpose, guys, I'm going to conclude by telling you that the Project Debut 3 turntable has become one of my favorites, and ultimately, a choice that I'm very glad I've made. However, there's some flaws with every piece of electronic. The only flaw or disadvantage I have with the debut three turntable is the fact that it is very limited control. The only control you do have capable of it is a power switch located under the rear of the unit, as well as taking the tone arm yourself and actually dropping him down. However, it has intensive other features that I just have always overlooked on other pieces of equipment in a sense of user capability and control. The anti-skating weight and mechanism are extremely designed with every piece of functionality in mind. The unit itself is aesthetically pleasing as installing it and building it up from the box was ever so easy. Also, I do find 